Hello folks, this is Sula speaking. You're listening to another video for Team Fight Tactics. This is taken from another double up game. Paired with me here is JDP El Grillo. I think Grillo and I have done the most of the double up games, although I've also done a decent number by now with Anti-Social Monkey and Headwinder. In this video, we're going to be looking at a team competition that has jumped up enormously in popularity since the B patch was released here at the beginning of set eight. And that is a mascot team composition that plays through Yumi. So this was honestly a mistake that the developers made. It is not shocking that they did this because they had uh, ended up buffing and nerfing so many different things. They changed something like 70 different things in their patch notes, which is completely absurd for a B patch. But that's team fight tactics for you. The developers never, ever, 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 ever can stop tinkering with all the numbers. And what they ended up doing was, among their many buffs and nerfs, they buffed the mana cost for uh, Yumi. They made it so Yumi's mana cost is lower. And combined with nerfing a whole bunch of other units, they ended up setting up a situation where Mascot reroll with Yumi actually ends up being one of the strongest builds in this particular patch. So we're going to be taking a look at that in this game. I have found two Galios so far. And there's also a Nasus in my store, which I really should pick up here. And I don't remember if I sell the Lulu to pick it up. All right, there we go. I wanted to get that tier off the Lulu anyway. So I was thinking about playing that in this game. I generally do not do reroll builds, but I have a pretty good opener for this. I have a, uh, I have two out of three Galios, two out of three Nasuses. And Grillo has also found a two-star Galio that he could potentially send me as well. And then I also have a Gangplank here that I would want if I'm going to play Supers. So I'm leaning in this direction towards playing Yumi, but we're going to wait and see what we get from the Augments and what other champions we're going to find. Part of the reason why Mascots became more popular is a lot of the other Frontliners ended up getting nerfed in that B patch, and that kind of left Mascots as strong options. Oh, and then I get Malphite. So I was like, Malphite, and then look at this. I get Mascot Crown, gain a Mascot Emblem, a Gargoyle Stoneplate, and a Malphite. So this is like a perfect setup for this particular uh, build. The only thing I need... Now, I, I don't have any two stars, which is a little bit unfortunate. I have not actually found Yumi yet. But still, this is a pretty good setup here. I have two out of three supers, so I would just have to find Lee Sin. And I would like to get the Malphite in. I can go ahead and toss this on. Now, I also have the Mascot Emblem, so I can turn another unit that is not normally a Mascot into a Mascot. So I'll be able to do that to get four mascots in. And then I decide, you know what, since Grillo has a two-star Galio that he can send me, and I have two out of three Galios, I'm gonna opt to put my tank items on Galio because I think I'm very, very likely to be able to three-star Galio. Like, it's stage two, one, and we already have five Galios between us. So I should be able to three-star this unit pretty easily. And I'm gonna go for this standard build, which is you play basically the mascot units. You try to get four mascots. So that would be Malphite together, typically with Nasus and Galio as the one-cost mascots, and then Yumi as a two-cost mascot. So that gets you four mascot. And then you play the supers units, Lee Sin plus Gangplank. And so at level six, you have four mascot. You have uh, three supers in for the damage bonus. And then you also have heart trait in because you get heart trait from the Lee Sin, who's a supers unit, plus the Yumi, who is a mascot unit. And that is kind of the, the standard board there. Now, the strength of this board is it has an awful lot of healing. It, it can be very difficult to get to the front line if the other teams do not have sufficient healing. By the way, here I hit two-star Malphite, so I was like, ah, I kind of wish I had those tank items on Malphite. But no, we're going to find more Galios. As we said, we already have five Galios, so it's, it should be very easy to hit three-star Galio. Uh, meanwhile, Grillo has taken level up, and so we're going to be taking the opposite approaches in this game. I will try to stay at a lower level and try to reroll. He is going to try to go to higher levels and just play the legendary suit comp of lots and lots of like four and five cost units. And then he'll just figure out what he ends up playing as we go along. So as I said, uh, the main goal is, or strength of the comp is it does have really good sustain mascots. Uh, mascot trait, if you're unfamiliar with it, mascot units have health regeneration. Most of them are tank units. Uh, Yumi is not a tank, but most of the others are frontliners. Basically, mascots heal percentage of their max health every two seconds. Mascot heal for double that amount. Right now, I have mascot two in, so all the mascots are healing for it's 1.5% times two on the mascot unit. So they're all healing for 3% of their max health every two seconds. Now, you might have noticed I am not particularly winning these rounds, and that's because I don't have any damage in my board right now. 
I need to get another mascot, or I need to get another unit and put them in the back row so that I can start making use of this stuff. By the way, another Malphite. I should definitely hold on to this. Uh, but I, I do want to get some kind of unit that deals damage, and there are some options here. I was like, I can play the... You know what I can do? I can play the Jax, and I can just toss him in here, and I'll toss this sword on him, and then uh, that'll get me four mascot, and it'll give me at least a small amount of damage, because Jax is a carry unit. So Jax will be regening for... Well, actually, he'll be regenning for more because I just put Mascot 4 trait in. Mascot 4 is 3.25% healing. I've mentioned this in previous videos. An odd number, 3.25%. And that gets doubled on Mascot units. So that's 6.5% of their health every two seconds. So I, I very easily win that round uh, now that I have the four Mascots in. So if you're dealing with mascots, the strength of them is they're very strong against damage over time effects because they are constantly healing health. Uh, you also really would like to get some kind of a heal cut in your board if you're going to be up against a mascot board. Sunfire Cape is very strong against them because it cuts their healing in half. And that's kind of the only thing that they do. Outside of health regeneration, they don't really do a whole lot. So they are very strong against damage over time, but they are weak if you can get some kind of a heal cut into the board against them. And they also struggle against burst damage. As you might imagine, these units regen health over time, so burst damage is kind of the weakness of their setup. Units that are particularly good at just dealing a huge burst of energy in one go, those are the units that are going to have the biggest issues for this setup. All right, now I have a couple different options here. I end up taking a tier because that'll allow me to make blue buff. Blue is one of the core items on Yumi. I also did have the option to take a belt there, which would not have been bad either. The belt would have allowed me to uh, belt would have allowed me to make a Wormogs, and Wormogs is always good in mascot team compositions because mascot units regenerate a percentage of their max health, and getting more health means that you then uh, you know regenerate for more HP. So Definitely, I could have taken the belt, and I'm still hoping I can get another belt for Wormogs. There's also the possibility for me, if I would get any spatulas, I can always make more mascot emblems. So I've already gotten one mascot emblem, right? I got that through my augments because I got the prismatic mascot crown or whatever it was called. But, um, you know, the there is mascot is a craftable emblem, so it's spatula plus belt. So I could, in theory, get another one as well with this belt, but I would have to get a spatula, which is maybe not the most realistic thing. For the moment, you saw I grabbed a vein off the carousel, and I was like, all right, well, I will just play this vein. Blue buff is not an amazing item on vein, but it's actually not terrible on her. It causes her to fire off her true bolts more often. Again, I would not suggest itemizing this on vein, but better than anything else I could run. And then I see that there's a Zoe in the star. I was like, all right, well, Zoe's going to make better use of a blue buff than vein. So once again, I will swap and I'm going to put the blue buff on uh, Zoe, and I'll let Zoe now carry the damage load. So again, I'm just playing full econ mode here. I am not looking to level because I'm playing a reroll comp. I'm just trying to get as much econ as possible. So that is why I am still level four. Fortunately, I have been, I lost the first two rounds, but I've been win streaking since then, and I think my board is actually reasonably strong for this stage of the game for mascot and. Uh, and then having the Zoe in just to toss bubbles at the other team. Obviously, it's helpful that I have Grillo, who is running level up and has a very strong board of his own, as usual for him. And so he is likely to come in and reinforce. And wow, okay, that was fast. Apparently, there's a team in the lobby that was like AFK and not even playing the game. So he just comes over instantly to reinforce. And that's going to be enough to get me to 30 gold and go into the minion round on a three-match winning streak. So I believe Grillo is full win streak. He may have lost the first round, but I think he's won, he's won at least the last four rounds. So we're feeling very comfortably right now in the position that we're in. And uh, now I just need to find Yumi. I have not found Yumi yet. Also, by the way, Silas's. Anyone want a Silas? Why couldn't those have been Galios, right? If those had all been Galios instead of Silas's, I think we would have had the three-star. Yeah, we would have the three-star Galio already if they had all been Galios, but no. Uh, also, Grillo has found two Yumis. I have not found any Yumis thus far, so... I am still looking for the Yumi. If I can get to level 6, I should be able to play 6 mascots, which normally I would not be able to do at level 6, because normally 6 mascots requires finding Nunu, which you're not going to do at level 6, let's be honest. So I'm probably, I probably just have to find Yumi and then find Alistar, and then I'll be able to play 6 mascots at level 6, which should be super strong. Uh, my thinking right now is I thought I would go to level 6 and try to reroll a bit there to try to see if I could find some Yumis. 
I unfortunately though I'm gonna get kind of bad news in terms of the items here. Look, I already had a sword, I get another sword, and I get a cloak, and I was like, uh, and then another tier. I was like, uh yeah, that's a little unfortunate. I was like, what do I do with these items? I don't have really have any need for this many things. I was like, ah, you know, if I had known I was gonna get another tier, I definitely would have taken a belt off that carousel. But uh, you know, you can't guarantee that. So I get an extra tier. And uh, it's actually, well, no, I was going to say it's unlikely that I would get another tier, but uh, I guess I took two off carousels because I took a blue off the first car a tier off the first carousel and then got another tier from uh, the second carousel. So yeah, wish I wish I had been able to get that belt, but no. And then apparently I'm up against one of the teams that has already quit the lobby. So it's like, what the heck? So yeah, this is going to be a weird game because one of the teams has quit the lobby at the beginning of stage three. So it's going to be down to just three teams, but it actually doesn't upset the lobby quite as much as you might think because we do still have an even number of players. We have six total players on three teams. What tends to cause really wacky stuff in the lobby is when you have an odd number of players, which we don't have here, fortunately. So yeah, kind of a kind of an odd game, but uh, <laughs> it, it is what it is, and uh, it ends up being kind of a normal game despite the fact that one of the teams quit the lobby like immediately at the start of the game. But uh, I just got like one additional free win. All right, second augment. I had the choice to take Ludens, which I am very happy to take. So Ludens is good for any team that's uh, spellcast frequently, and Ludens is going to be a great choice in that regard. Anyway, I'm going to toss in a LeBlanc, and again, I'm just trying to get to level 6 as quickly as possible. Unfortunately, I have not found any Lee Sins. I have only found one Gangplank. I have not found any Yumis yet either. So I'm trying to get to level 6 where I want to reroll for Yumi, but I'm kind of not hitting here. Like, I got two Galios on, like, the very first minion stage, and I haven't seen any Galios since then. So I was like, ah, that's really kind of unfortunate that I'm not finding more of these. And also not finding any Yumis yet is, is a bit unfortunate as well, since Yumi is kind of the unit I'm looking for. Grillo's found two out of three, but he we don't want to use one of our sends on uh, just one Yumi. We want to send it for at least a two-star Yumi. And we also still would like to send for that two-star Galio as well, but have not managed to find any more Galios. So... Uh, I, I've been doing really well in terms of my augments. Like, the mascot crown is awesome. And then Ludens is really good as well. Look at how often the Zoe is procking the Ludens. She's just casting every, like, two seconds. And every time she does that, she procs Ludens. So this is just a fantastic item to have, or an augment to have here. So I'm win streaking pretty easily. But, like, at some point, I am going to need to start putting my comp together, too. So I was kind of like, uh, okay. I mean, Zoe is fine for right now. But I, I kind of do want to get Yumi in with this build I'm going for. There was also the option just to pivot out of Yumi, and perhaps maybe I should have done that because we really weren't seeing Yumi's here, but I also wanted to give this build a try because this has been a very, very popular build on the ladder ever since this B patch came out, and I did want to give this one a try just to see how it would work. All right, well, I will pick up the Nasus because I might be able to push towards Nasus 3-star, and I am 2 XP off the next level, so I might as well level here and play another unit. So we'll go ahead and level, and I just toss in the Lux because she does give me Spellsinger on the LeBlanc, the other unit that has that. But uh, Lux, a one-star, one-cost Lux is definitely not the unit I'm looking to play here. I'm like, uh, can we maybe find some Yumi's? Again, if I can find Yumi and I can find Alistar, I can get up to six Mascot, which is what I would very much like to run. But uh, I And I also have the... Uh, and I also have that mascot emblem as well. I actually don't even need to find Alistar. All I need to do is find uh, Yumi and then, or uh, Yumi or Alistar would actually get me up to six mascots, uh, potentially. Or maybe I'm, actually I might be miscounting that. Oh, well, anyway. So yeah, I'm just tearing through these boards. The front line of mascots is tanking really well. And then the uh, Zoe in the back lines is, you know, just dealing lots of damage in part with their ability and in part with the Luden's Echo, which is going really, really, really well. All right, so here we've got another carousel. Uh, my top priority, and by the way, I get second pick because that team's missing. My top priority is the belt for Warmogs because it synergizes so well with the way that the mascot units work. And fortunately, I'm able to get that. This is one, again, beneficial effect of someone being out of the lobby that we do get earlier picks on these carousels. So I will be happy to take that. And so now I can go ahead and make the Warmogs and then I'll make Galio a much tankier unit. All right, so Grillo has the chance to send me a gift at the beginning of this stage, and it turns out that he's going to be able to send me, oh, a spatula. I was like, oh, 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 okay. Spatula's an option. Well, I've got a belt right here. Let's go ahead and make the mascot emblem done. Okay. 
So <laughs> now I'm able to, uh, now I have double mascot emblems and that opens up the possibility of playing six mascots, which is not something I would normally do. And there we go. There is the Yumi. So we finally found the Yumi. I will go ahead and I can't put the mascot emblem on her. She's already a mascot. So I just need to put it on someone. I was like, oh, I've got this extra Zoe. Let's put the Zoe back in. Why not? We can just put her in and turn her into a mascot. And then I also have this opportunity to maybe play the Echo is also a possibility. I was like, do I want to play Echo on my board? Hmm, maybe. So anyway, I'm going to put that mascot emblem on and boom, now I have six mascots. Now, the one downside is I was not able to make the Wormogs that I wanted. So that's a little bit unfortunate, but uh, I do feel like it's worthwhile to get the six mascots in play. That's going to be really, really good long term. Anyway, I'm actually losing this fight because apparently I did not have quite enough to get through the front. Oh, it's because the other team had a Galio with a Sunfire Cape. And so that allowed them to cut through the healing on my team. That's the biggest reason why uh, I was able to. Oh, I was losing that round. So, yeah, now I was like, I guess I'll just sit here. Oh, and I had the chance to send Grillo some stuff as well. So spatula or component anvil. I don't remember which one he takes. Let's see. He goes for the component anvil. Okay. And so I'm going to go ahead and look to reroll a little bit here, at least to try to hit Yumi two star. And hey, there we go. All right, that wasn't so bad. So now I have two. Uh, now I have two Yumi's and or a two star Yumi. And there we go. There's two star Galio. Okay, so this is starting to look a lot better. I've been able to hit some of my two stars. I'm going to move Yumi up a little bit, and I have to think about who I want to put these mascot emblems on long term. What units do I want to put them on? I was like, well, let's go ahead and put this one on Echo. Because that'll keep Prankster Trait in play. He's going to be a very good frontliner with Prankster Trait in. And then I'm building towards Malphite 3-star. I'm building towards Nasus 3-star. And I have two out of three Gangplanks as well. So my thinking now is, uh, actually, now that I can play Mascot 8, I think that the plan is actually don't stay here at level 6 and reroll endlessly. Let's go to level 8. We'll find the Nunu, find the Alistar. And then I can play Gangplank and Lee Sin as my two plus one mascots. And I'll be able to run eight mascot plus super traits with these in because I can turn Gangplank into a mascot and I can turn Lee Sin into a mascot. Now, Gangplank's not going to be a particularly amazing mascot on his own, but Lee Sin actually should be a pretty good mascot. So that's the plan. And then we'll get, uh, hopefully we can slow roll at eight after that and try to hit as many three stars as possible. And we already have five Yumi, so we have pretty good odds to be able to hit the Yumi three star. So like there's Alistar. And I think that at this point I stopped rerolling and I start leveling towards eight because that was my goal there. Yeah, there we go. There's the Yumi two star. So like we're already looking pretty good as far as hitting these units. Uh, by the way, I probably should not have played Alistar here. I think I should have just played the other Yumi because the biggest thing my comp is lacking is damage. So we've got we've got six Yumis already. All we need to do is find three more between the two of us. That shouldn't be too difficult for us to do. Anyway, so now I'm going to go through these different options, and ah, I get a bow. Okay, the bow is not quite what I'm looking for here, but uh, I did have the option to do something with it. Oh, and I do find the Lee Sin, so I'm going to go ahead and put in Lee, and then I also can put in the Gangplank, and there we go. So now we have six mascot, three supers, so we're going to get the supers damage bonus. I am going to make Dragon's Claw. I do think that that's a good call, and then I think that I go ahead and make a Zerat Portal with this last item, but I think in retrospect I should have made Giant Slayer for Yumi, yeah, I think I should have taken the sword because I really had very little use for the sword. I think I should have made Giant Slayer for Yumi and then had the belt left over because I still could have looked to have made a Wormogs there. So I don't think like I don't think this is a terrible use of these items, but I do think that making Giant Slayer on Yumi would have been a little bit better here. All right, well, to cover some of the stuff that I have put in, Mascot 6 trait increases the healing again. Mascot 6 is 6.5% healing every two seconds, and that is doubled for Mascot units. I think every unit on my board right now is a mascot unit, except who am I missing? I think maybe the Gangplank is not. So they are healing for double that. They heal for 13% of their max HP every two seconds. So that is an awful lot of healing. Uh, and then the benefit goes up even higher if you can manage to get up to eight mascots. At eight mascots, the benefit goes up to 12% healing every two seconds. Again, doubled for mascot units and every unit will be a mascot. So that would be 24% healing every two seconds. Basically, units would heal for a quarter of their health bar every other second. Anyway, so we had our last augment. It was a champion augment, and it turned out to be an Alistar. Uh, it is the carry augment for Alistar. I know I went through that relatively quickly. So just to cover what this does, this one is called Smash, gain an Alistar. He restores 10 mana per second, and his ability hits all enemies 
within one hex. So it causes Alistar's ability to hit more units. What is his ability, by the way? Should probably cover that. I'll just read his description. It's Pulverize, so much like it is in normal League of Legends. Alistar slams the ground, deals magic damage, knocks them up for 1.5 seconds. He then roars, healing himself and the lowest health allied champion for 20% of his maximum health. So basically, Alistar has some CC. He stuns the nearest target and then heals himself and the nearest allied champion for 20% of maximum health. So CC plus healing, basically, is the setup there. Uh, needless to say, having an Alistar whose ability hits in a wider range means that he gets an AoE knockup, and he's also gaining mana per second, so he'll be able to cast more often. Now, this fight is actually not going so great, but fortunately, Grillo's able to come in and bail me out here. You might have noticed he's playing a laser core board of sorts, and I'm going to continue just being very greedy and e-kinding here up towards level 8. And again, on level 8, I want to roll and try to find uh, more of my uh, 3-star units because Super Straight does not really do that much until you have 3-star units. I also have hit 2-star Alistar, so I really have to get this unit in. The unit to take out is Nasus. Let's see if I spot that I should do that. There we go. So now we'll go ahead and look to play the Alistar somewhere up on the front line. Um, by the way, I also have not been finding any more Galios, so long term I may want to transfer my tank items off of Galio and onto someone else if I can't hit 3-star Galio. You know, it looks so good to hit 3-star Galio at the beginning of the game, but we have not been seeing this unit at all. All right, this is also a board that is a problem. This is the board that's going to give me the most trouble throughout the game. This person is playing a Renegade board, and they've made 3-star Camille. I believe they actually have six Renegade in. I don't know if they found the Leona yet, but they will have it soon. So remember what I said about Mascot Trait. It is very strong at sustained damage over time, but it is weak against burst damage. Well, what does that Camille have? That Camille has a lot of burst damage because she's got the Radiant Infinity Edge to go along with the Titans and the Bloodthirster. Yeah, Radiant Infinity Edge will allow her physical damage to crit. I suspect it will crit every single time, so... Yeah, that is a lot of damage. <laughs> that is a lot of damage right there. Uh, there's also another spatula right here. I was like, do I take this? But I was like, no, I need to make use of the item that's on my bench. I believe I had a leftover sword, and I needed to do something with this. Grillo, however, is going to take the spatula, and we're going to hope that we can find some way to make use of that on his board. So why the glove? Well, I wanted to put some kind of crit item on Yumi. So I'm hoping I can maybe find a rod out of the anvil that comes out of the next uh, minion round. However, um, if I can't get that, I can go ahead and make Infinity Edge as well. Okay, so now I was like, can I try go ahead and get the eight mascots in? And unfortunately, I cannot because I have not found Nunu yet. I do need to find Nunu to get the mascot, uh, to get the eight mascots in. So between the two of us, that is the unit we're most looking for right now. But I do want to get up to 50 gold and look to slow roll there. The unit that will come out is Echo. Echo is actually doing a, a lot of work for me right now. He's giving me Aegis trait, and it's just an in general good uh, unit to play. But I, I thought I had Prankster trait in, but no, I do not, unfortunately. Uh, by the way, so the biggest weakness in my comp right now is I just don't really have any damage. And, like, look at the Yumi. She's trying her best to hit the back line, and, like, she's going to do a lot of damage, but she just doesn't have enough damage to finish off these units. There's, like, that Aphelios back there, and up, oh, she's going to knock Aphelios down low, but he's got a Hand of Justice, going to knock him down low again. So if Yumi were three-starred, she'd be killing him here. Also, if I had gone ahead and made the Infinity Edge, she would have been critting on that damage. She also would have killed uh, the Aphelios as well. So that is the fight that's lost because... I have that item sitting on my bed, but on my bench. But I do want to see if I can get Jeweled Gauntlet instead, because I really would prefer a Jeweled Gauntlet. Yumi could use the ability power much more than I mean, Infinity Edge is not bad because it allows her spell to crit, but it gives attack damage, not ability power. As far as Yumi herself, I should read her official description. She has three traits, Heart, Mascot, Star Guardian. We have all the traits in except Star Guardian in this game. Her ability costs 50 mana. It used to cost 60, but they buffed it to 50 mana. Yumi fires a curved missile at the furthest target in her attack range, deals magic damage to the first unit hit. And the damage goes up very substantially at 3 stars. Right now it is 385 base damage at 2 star. 600 at 3 star. So the thing about Yumi is she fires at the furthest target away. 
So you can have fights like this one where like Zed was kind of up in her face, but she's just continuing to not aim at the Zed. Instead, she aims at a unit that is far away in the background. This fight, we are struggling to win because the Zed keeps healing off of his Hand of Justice. But Grillo, once again, is going to come in and help save me. Grillo has been really helping me out throughout this game. And I am looking to do what I can to help him. But oh, the high roll. There we go. Going to hit the Nunu. So Echo comes out. And Nuno goes in, and now we will put this onto the Gangplank. Now, one thing I thought about after the game is I think that playing the Supers was probably a mistake in this game. Supers trait is the reroll trait. It gives you bonus damage for playing the three Supers units. The flat benefit is 20%. Yeah, 20% bonus damage for your whole team. And then it's 5% additional damage for every 3-star. But I just didn't have a lot of 3-stars. And that's because I had chosen to push to higher levels rather than stay and reroll for like Yumi at level 6 or so. So I think it was just probably a mistake to play these units. I could have opted to just play better units as the mascots instead. Like instead of playing Lee Sin and Gangplank for 20% damage boost, like what was that really doing? Not a whole lot. Let's be honest. Not a whole lot. Instead, what I could have done, and by the way, I'm going to send this over to Grillo because I made a two-star Zed for his board. Uh, what I could have done instead is I could have just ignored supers completely and then opted to play better units. Like, I could have replaced the Leeson with Soraka. That would also give me the heart trait, and Soraka is just a better unit. And then instead of the Gangplank, I could have played, like, basically anything. Maybe I could have played just a random legendary unit. I could have played something like Zack because Zack is a very good mascot. He has a lot of base health, and... He uh, like he has a lot of base health, and then that just gives him additional uh, health regeneration to go with all of his base health. Or I could have just played a unit for additional damage, right? Like Soraka would give me additional damage. I could have just played like a Mordekaiser or something as well, because Mordekaiser would shred enemy MR and just deal damage. So, you know, like just some other random unit. Yes, the Gangplank and the Lee Sin gave me 20% additional damage, but like how much is that really? Could have just played better units, I think. So I do think that was a mistake in retrospect. And that is the one thing I would change if I could do this game again. All right, well, I do find one more Yumi, and Grillo has sent me a champion duplicator. So I am one Yumi off of Yumi 3-star, and that's the biggest thing I need right now to increase the strength of my team. Also, I could have played Zoe. Like, look at this. There's three Zoes in the store. Could just play Zoe instead. Zoe would give me just another unit that deals damage. So, like, playing Zoe and Soraka in the back lines, I think, would have helped a fair bit, as opposed to Gangplank and Lee that are really doing nothing for me in this game. But, oh, well. Water under the bridge now. Like I said, something to consider for the future. That is part of the reason why I run these games, uh, is so I can look back and see what I maybe could have done better. So I'm basically rolling for more Nunus, and, or I'm rolling for uh, Yumi 3-star. But uh, Yumi 3-star would help me a lot, because, again, my team is tanky, but what I'm lacking is damage. I really, really need Yumi to be 3-starred. Not only would it increase her damage by quite a bit, as I said, it um, increases her damage by like 60%. It also would give me another unit to take advantage of supers because I have zero three-star units at the moment. None of them are taking advantage of the supers trait. So yeah, uh, this fight is not going well. And after that amazing early game, it's kind of starting to fall apart here. So I was like, ah, geez, it's actually not going so great here because I can't, I can't get this Yumi to give myself additional damage. <laughs> Anyway, and, and because I've also made mistakes in constructing the board, as I said. All right, anyway, so I'm going to continue to reroll here. Grillo has the option to take a spatula or an orn item. He does have a Nunu over there, so if we can find one more Nunu, we could get Nunu 2-star, and that does offer us another option. He decided he would just take the extra gold, so I'm going to go ahead and send that. Didn't really need that stuff. Uh, and then I'm also going to pick up this Galio because that gives me the option. Oh, I actually sold the Galio. I should have held on to that. I should have held on because it gave me the option to transfer items. Yeah. See, now I have three-star Alistar, so I really, really, really want to get these items off Galio and onto Alistar. So I need to find another Galio for that. I have no idea why I sold that unit. That was a major mistake. I'm also grabbing Senna's. The Senna's are kind of random, but um, Grillo was going for Senna three-star because he was playing a laser core into uh, Aphelios board. So I'm going to look to go ahead and see if I can make a two-star center for him, because I think he has like four or five centers at the moment. 
and we're trying to push towards that. Anyway, the three-star Alistar has actually made a very big difference indeed. Three-star Alistar is healing for a just an absurd amount of health. Look, he's getting like plus 1,000 health every couple seconds. If I had any kind of damage behind this, I'd be winning like every fight, but I just have so little damage behind this. I have, the, I have a two-star Yumi on 5-3. Like, that is not going to cut it. So Alistar is incredible. He doesn't even have items on him, which I'm going to have to try to get another Galio so I can do that. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> Alistar does tank forever, and he does have the carry augment, so that is probably my best unit right now. Of course, I would desperately like to pick up this Nunu, but of course this person who's messing around is going to go ahead and take that. So after that, I was like, ah, uh, okay, I guess I'll take this Spear of Shojin, but turns out I make a major mistake with this as well. I end up putting the Spear of Shojin on Nunu, but the Spear of Shojin actually does nothing for Nunu, uh, because it only triggers on auto attacks, and Nunu does not auto attack, so... Oof. Yep, that's a real oofer. Uh, <laughs> and by the way, I asked if Grillo needed the Aphelios, and he actually did not. But I'm, I'm still looking for one more. I'm still looking for one more Yumi. I was like, how hard is it to find one more Yumi? But I do find another Nunu, so I asked Grillo, can he send me his Nunu? So that's going to make Nunu two star. So that's going to come over any second now. And we're going to put all our tank items on the Alistar. Uh, I guess Grillo didn't get it in time. So we'll have to look to do that in the next round. So that's good news. I don't have to use my champion duplicator on Nunu. I can use the champion duplicator on the uh, Yumi. But again, I'm still still struggling to get that. And I'm also mispositioning my units too. I keep having the Yumi over on the right-hand side. This person's been positioning Camille on the right-hand side. So Yumi is just dying to the Camille over and over and over again. And this person also has a Leona that's got the Solar Beam on Alistar. So that is finally going to cut through Alistar's healing. So after this great early game, my board really is struggling here. It's not going well. And I've made some pretty major mistakes in terms of how I put this team together. But uh, there is still hope here. Uh, I'm going to have, as I said, the two-star Nunu. So that's going to help. There is the two-star Senna. So I can send that over to Grillo to help him out. Grillo has also just hit level 10. So yeah, he has level up augment so he can hit level 10. And like, come on, can I find one more Yumi? Je Jesus Christ, I can't find this Yumi. Oh my God. So I'm still one off the Yumi, but uh, I think that Grillo does have a Nunu that he can send me, or he had one before. Does he still have that? I thought that he was able to send the Nunu to me. Uh, Nunu is important because, you know, with eight mascot, Nunu's going to heal for a tremendous amount. Yeah, Grillo still does have the Nunu, so he can send that before the next round. Probably should have sent that earlier. Uh, so again, my team is super tanky. If I can just get any kind of damage here, I think that my board is going to work. The problem is just I'm not killing anything in these fights. Uh, like my like again, Alistar is unbelievably tanky, but I can't kill anything. I need the Yumi three star, and it is very sad that I put the Spear of Shojin on Nunu because it literally doesn't do anything on him because he doesn't auto attack. I guess it gives him ten ability power, but that is not very impressive. Again, look at Alistar's tanking. This is absolutely crazy. He just does not die until we get into overtime. If I had <laughs> just anything to put behind the Alistar, I'd be feeling good. At least we are guaranteed to make it to second place if things don't go better. But I do feel like I have misplayed this rather substantially. So now I'm going to need to fix things. I'm on this five-match losing streak. going to need to fix things, figure it out, and get to a situation where my team actually does deal some kind of damage. So it looks like Grillo has eight Senas over there. And he has quite a few threats on his board as well. So we still have the opportunity to do something. We've got one more send over here. Had the opportunity to do something with it. We're still looking for another Yumi. I had six Yumis at like the beginning of stage three, and we're still looking for <laughs> another Yumi. Have not found like any more Yumis. Again, I am level eight, but the odds aren't that low to find Yumi. No one else is playing the Yumi in this lobby, so it's a little unfortunate. Anyway, here I look at these different options like, oh, Dragon's Claw for Nunu. That's going to make Nunu very difficult to kill. Most of these other teams are dealing um, magic damage. And, oh, of course I find the Nunu right after Grillo sends it to me. I was like, ah, probably should have finished rolling down so we could have saved that uh, item send. I'm like, come on, where is the Yumi? Why can't I find this unit? Why can't I find this unit? Why is this so difficult? I still can't find it. Oh, my God. How can I not find one more copy of this unit? I have the champion duplicator. This is unreal. Ugh. But at least on the positive side, I have managed to find... The two-star Nunu, and Nunu now has a Dragon's Claw. So remember, Dragon's Claw is going to give him a ton of magic resistance. It also gives him a little bit of additional health regen for every unit that targets him. 
And Nunu is just going to be healing an absurd amount. Look at the healing on him. He heals back 24% of his health every two seconds. So it's just very difficult for anyone to burst him down. Also, Grillo was econing to level 10 for like the last few rounds. So he had not been spending his gold. Now he's rolled down. Now he's gotten stronger as well. I'm going to send him the Senna because that's going to make three-star Senna. And there, finally, finally the Yumi. Thank goodness I took the champion duplicator. So now, now our boards have finally spiked in power. I've got two-star Nunu with at least one very good item in the, uh, whatchamacallit, in the Dragon's Claw. And I finally, finally have three-star Yumi, thank goodness. Took until 6-2 to hit this unit with the, even though I had the uh, champion duplicator. And now with eight mascots in, Alistar has very good itemization. Yumi will finally be doing deeps for real now because... She will crit on all of her attacks. Yeah, she just did 900 damage to the Urgot. What a difference that made. And meanwhile, Nunu is going to be pushing around that ball on the back lines. Uh, just watch his health bar. Like, it goes down, but then it just goes back up again. Alistar is completely unkillable on the front lines. The only way anyone kills Alistar is if the rounds go into overtime or something. And we're, Nunu's going to roll the ball right into that Soraka. And that's going to be enough to get that kill. So now we've got them down to 1 HP. So that we're feeling pretty good about the game right now. And, um, you know, it looks like we just need to win one more round. But uh, on the interface, Soraka 2-star, they are getting close to the Soraka 3-star. We're like, all right, well, we have to grab any Sorakas we see. But, oh, too late, 3-star Soraka. Oh, no. Are we going to lose this round now that they're on one hit point because they have 3-star Soraka? They've actually made Soraka a Star Guardian, which I don't think is really necessary. If you put a blue buff on Soraka, she casts constantly anyway. I'm not sure that... Star Guardian really does that much for her, but still, 7 Star Guardian, 3 Star Soraka does feel pretty insane. Well, I am up against the board that is not the Soraka, so I'm hoping I can win this round, and if I can win this round, I can maybe just knock this team out of the lobby right here. The Alistar is going to get low, but the Alistar just keeps healing. The healing is absolutely insane. So, I, unfortunately, the health bar is bugged out in this battle for some reason. And then it looks like they three-star Soraka was able to beat Grillo. That's not shocking. But all oh, the Nunu is still alive. Healing for 900. Healing for 900. Healing for another 900. And boop! He's going to push the ball into Soraka. But we were like, wait a minute. What? What? I thought that ended the game. I thought they were out of the lobby. What? Ah, uh, apparently they still had like fractional health left. So, ah, uh, was not enough to get that. Ah, oh, geez. So we're going to have to win one more round. Whew. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and take the Death Cap here. Uh, the other good option would have been Ionic Spark, but I think the Death Cap, just to pump up Nunu's damage, is the best thing that I can do here. Uh, I will be I, I do have Heart Trait, so the AP of the whole team does keep going up as Yumi casts. But still, nonetheless, I think that that was the best item I could take. Nunu is not dying in these fights. He doesn't need the Ionic Spark. What he needs is a little bit more damage to help him push that ball around. By the way, I've been sitting on six Malphites the whole game, too, and I really did not hit Malphites the entire game, either. So that's a bit unfortunate. Uh, so now I'm going to be up against three-star Soraka. So how do I do this? Let's put Yumi as far away from Soraka as possible. Let's put Alistar right next to the Soraka. Hopefully he will tank her star calls. Because Alistar is one unit that can sit there and soak up those attacks and not really feel it. Because thankfully he's got that Dragon's Claw. Yeah, he's going to be healing. <laughs> he healed for 800 plus 600 right there. Nunu is still shoving that ball around in the back lines. He is healing for 900 at a time. Alistar is healing for 1,000 at a time. And can the Soraka manage to burst their units? Well, Soraka is a damage over time unit. She is not a burst caster. And that means that she is a poor fit to take on our team. So she does 30,000 damage, but she can't get through my healing. And so that's going to be enough for us to win this game. What a wild match this one was. So I had the eight mascots. I had the unkillable Alistar. I had the Nunu pushing that ball around. Finally got the three-star Yumi on like the next to last round of the game. If I had just gotten the Yumi earlier, this would have been an absolute cakewalk. But no, it turned out to be a very difficult and very entertaining game. But hey, this one was fun, so I'll take it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for joining me, Grillo. And until next time, see you guys soon.